Can you lose weight just by adding beans to your diet? Today I will be answering that question using scientific studies, and I'll also tell you about how exactly legumes affect your weight, and whether weight loss depends on the types of legumes you eat, how you cook them, and also the specific dosing of beans and lentils. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I will be talking about pulses, aka beans and lentils, which is a subset of legumes. And first I'll talk about some general findings from studies on how adding beans and lentils to your diet affects your weight. I'll also talk about whether that is related to the number of calories you eat or the macros of your diet. And then I'm going to answer some questions that some of you asked on Patreon about how to get the most bang for your bean buck, aka whether the type of beans you eat matters, whether how you prepare them matters, and how weight loss from beans and lentils compares to weight loss from things like whole grains, along with a few other specific questions. So be sure to stick around till the end if you want all the details on how best to include beans and lentils in your diet in order to maximize weight loss. The first study I'm going to talk about today was motivated by the fact that calorie restriction in order to diet and lose weight generally leads to weight regain. So these authors wanted to test how effective a diet would be if they didn't have people restrict their calories and instead just had them add beans or lentils to their diet. And specifically, they compared a typical calorie restriction diet where people ate at a deficit of 500 calories per day to a diet where they had participants add five cups of beans and lentils to their diet per week. So that means the participants in the pulse group just added a little under three quarters a cup a day of cooked beans or lentils to their diet, and that is the only thing they changed. And the control group was just eating a calorie restricted diet at a 500 calorie deficit per day. But what's interesting about this control condition is that the researchers actually advised participants to cut calories by eating less processed food, like sugar and alcohol, and eating more fruits and vegetables. So really the researchers were shooting themselves in the foot with finding an effect because this calorie restriction group is actually probably gonna be way better off than your average calorie restricting person. So they actually made it harder for them to find good effects of legumes. And I just want you to hold that little bit in mind because it makes the results even cooler. And the researchers found that participants in the calorie restriction group lost an inch off their waist over the course of these eight weeks. And the researchers also found that participants in the pulse or legume eating group also lost an inch off of their waist over the course of these eight weeks. So according to this study, just adding three quarters of a cup per day of beans and lentils to your diet is just as effective for losing inches off your waist as slashing 500 calories from your diet and adding more fruits and vegetables and cutting down sugar and alcohol. So the question you might be asking is, well, did eating legumes naturally make people so satiated that they ate fewer calories. And we already know that legumes are a high satiety food, so the question is, do legumes cause weight loss just because they make you more satiated and make you eat fewer calories? Or do legumes have a separate effect on weight loss that actually isn't through calorie reduction? And to answer that question, I'm next going to talk about a meta-analysis of over 20 randomized controlled trials where researchers either gave people beans or lentils, to add to their diet, or had them do a calorie-matched control group. So for all 21 of these studies, participants in the bean or lentil adding group ate the same exact number of calories, on average, as participants in the control groups. And so they looked to see if adding beans or lentils to your diet for the same number of calories eaten causes weight loss. And this meta-analysis found that on average across all these studies of 1,000 people, People were able to lose three quarters of a pound over the course of six weeks just by adding 130 grams per day of cooked beans or lentils to their diet. And that equates to about two thirds of a cup of cooked lentils or three quarters of a cup of cooked beans. And they didn't only find this on calorie restricted diets, they also found this on weight maintaining diets. So giving people the number of calories that they need to maintain their weight according to the control groups of all these studies actually made people lose weight when beans were added to their diet or lentils. So eating your usual maintenance calories, but replacing some of those calories with beans or lentils causes people to lose weight. And so yet again, we see that not all calories are created equal, especially when we look at different food types. And this is probably not at all surprising to you if you follow my channel, because I have a lot of videos going over a lot of studies showing that calories are not as definitive as most people think they are. And for a more specific example, in the case of beans and lentils, studies have found that replacing 
For example, 200 calories of meat with 200 calories of beans or lentils actually causes people to lose weight. And based on that, the next question you might be asking is, well, do macros matter? Because again, if you are familiar with my past videos, then you probably know that high fat foods in particular tend to cause more weight gain for the same number of calories as high carb foods, because it is very inefficient to convert carbs into body fat. So the next question might be, well, do legumes cause weight loss because they're replacing high fat foods in people's diets? Like, is it caused by changing macro ratios? And one small hint of support for that idea comes from the first study I went over, where people in the calorie restriction control group decreased their percent of carbohydrates in their diet a little bit from slashing sugar and alcohol and whatnot, whereas people in the legume group actually increased their carbohydrate percentage in their diet. And to answer the question of whether legumes help with weight loss because they are low in fat, I found a study that actually equated the percentage of carbohydrates between the bean and lentil group and the control group. And the study found that when the percent of carbohydrates was the same between the bean and lentil adding diet and the control diet, people on the bean and lentil diet lost five and a half more pounds over the course of eight weeks. So it looks like it is not caused just by being low fat. It is something specific about beans and lentils that is causing a ton of weight loss for the same number of calories and the same percentage of carbohydrates in a diet. And now for our next segment here, I'm gonna answer some specific questions I got on how to maximize the benefits of beans and lentils for weight loss. So we're gonna talk about preparation methods, specific types of legumes, as well as how they stack up against other healthy whole plant foods. And these questions were asked by some of our patrons who support this channel over on the Patreon. And specifically, I share the video topics in advance, ask people if they have any questions they'd like me to cover in the video. And these excellent questions I'm about to go over are courtesy of some of those patrons. So you have them to thank for getting this much more specific information than I would have thought to include in the video on my own. And the first question is, are some legumes more beneficial than others? Now, it doesn't seem like there are any studies on this yet directly looking at weight because this whole area is kind of in its infancy, especially with getting to this level of specificity. But I was happily surprised to see that some studies have looked at how different types of legumes impact satiety in terms of how much you eat later on in the day. And these studies so far suggest that it seems like lentils might be slightly more effective than most other kinds of beans. Whereas in the short term, chickpeas might be less effective than other kinds of beans, but in the long term, chickpeas actually make you feel more satisfied. This is all kind of weak. We need more studies on this to say anything for sure, but for a first hint, it looks like lentils might be your best bet and the jury's out on chickpeas. But in general, the bean that you like the most or the lentil that you like the most is gonna be the best one because you're gonna to wanna to eat the most of it and then you're gonna get the most benefits. So I only suggest caring about these different types of legumes if you are perfectly neutral in terms of your preferences. The second question is, does it matter how you prepare beans and lentils for how they affect your weight? And again, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's studies directly on weight loss, but again, there are studies on satiety. So it seems like when you add blended beans and lentils to your diet, it does not have the satiety boosting effects. And then in terms of flours, there's not really much out there, but so far it seems like you might still get some satiety benefits from flour. The next question is how beans and lentils stack up against whole grains and starchy vegetables for weight loss. And first for some satiety studies, studies have shown that beans are even more satiating than potatoes, and potatoes are known to be one of the highest satiety foods out there. This is actually just one study, so grain of salt, we'll need to replicate this. But for now, beans are very satiating, even compared to potatoes. However, when beans are used as a flour in breads, they do not have an advantage over whole wheat flour, is what the study suggests so far. And now I'm excited to report that there are some studies comparing beans and lentils to grains for actual weight loss, not just satiety, and a randomized controlled trial that compared adding one cup of pulses per day to people's diets versus adding grains like brown rice and whole wheat, found that the group that had beans added lost more weight than the group that ate whole grains. Though note that whole grains are also great for weight loss as shown in other studies, it's just that beans might be slightly better. And then another study found that oats and beans seem to have similar effects on weight loss. And if you're interested in oatmeal and oats specifically, I have a whole video on how they affect your weight and why and specific dosing and all that kind of stuff too. So check that out after this if you're interested. The next question is whether it matters if lentils are on their own or combined with other foods like rice in terms of weight loss. And I don't think studies have actually compared lentils alone versus lentils with something else, but I can for sure say that eating lentils with other foods or beans with other foods 
does give you the weight loss benefits because pretty much all of these studies just incorporated beans or lentils into meals instead of just having people eat them plain. So for example, the study that found that replacing meat with beans caused weight loss actually had it meat with rice versus beans or lentils with rice and found that swapping meat for beans and lentils caused weight loss. The next question was about dosing, specifically what the minimum bean or lentil dose you would need to lose weight or what kinds of doses you should be aiming for. And again, no specific study parametrically manipulating bean or lentil dosage seems to exist yet, although that would be a wonderful study and I'm very excited for it. But for now, based on the meta-analysis and the few studies that have been done on different doses, it seems like 80 grams per day of cooked beans or lentils might be too little to get an effect because one of the studies used 80 grams per day and didn't get an effect. But of course, we can't be sure if that's just due to noise or a crappy study or something. But based on what we have to go on so far, maybe try for higher than 80 grams per day. And the only semi-confident answer I can give is based on the average in this meta-analysis, which was 130 grams per day of cooked beans or lentils caused consistent weight loss in people on average three quarters of a pound over six weeks. And that equates to two thirds of a cup of lentils per day or three quarters of a cup of beans per day cooked. If you would like to ask questions like this and get involved in the making of these videos, then head on over to my Patreon where I post video topics in advance so I can get people's thoughts and questions on them and then try to answer those in the video if there are decent studies to answer them with. And I'll give my opinions within Patreon for things that don't yet have empirical evidence. So if you wanna become a patron, you can head on over there. I'll put the link up here and in the description below. And another way you can support this channel and help me make videos if you're interested is to head on over to my GoFundMe, which I'll also put the link below. I hope all this data has convinced you that beans are indeed the magical fruit <laughs> in that they are very helpful for weight loss, even if you're eating the same number of calories. So if you are looking to lose weight and don't want to have to torture yourself with calorie restriction, we yet again have an example where you can just add a very delicious and extremely healthy food to your diet in a way that causes you to lose weight without even really trying or probably even noticing, besides noticing that your pants are suddenly loose and you look better and you're lighter and you're healthier. <laughs> I also have a video of health effects of legumes in the works, so if you're interested in that, please let me know below. And to get a taste of the Patreon experience, if you have any questions that you might like to see answered in that video, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like and share it so other people can learn that beans are indeed the magical fruit. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.